This is the uh, final uh, uh, video uh, from Chapter 6, Integration or Integral Applications. Um, and uh, this is on fluid pressure. Um, so let's, uh, what we're going to be able to do in this section is use integrals to figure out uh, pressures against submerged uh, plates or submerged objects such as the force against a dam or something like that. Uh, so let's uh, first uh, start off with some uh, principles from uh, hydrodynamics by looking at some pictures. So in this first picture what we're noting is that if we have a plate, either a uh, plate that is vertical or one that is uh, horizontal or one that is somewhere in between, if we are at um, some depth uh, H below the surface, so that H would be from here to here, then uh, all of these pressures at that depth are the same. So the pressure down on this plate and the pressure up on this plate are the same. The pressure uh, at this same depth left on this plate and the pressure right on this plate are the same and at the, uh, for this plate at this uh, irregular angle the pressure from above uh, coming from the left is the same as the pressure from below coming from the right and we're going to use the fact that all of these uh, that the pressure at each of uh, these depths is the same to help us uh, do these uh, problems to find pressures against plates the other uh, fact that we want to use is uh, essentially Archimedes principle that says if we have an object submerged uh, at a depth H, so let's consider this plate right here uh, and we want to know what is the uh, force against it uh, assuming that the depth is H the way we uh, figure out that force is to figure out the weight of the volume of the fluid that is above it. So the volume of the fluid is going to be its length times its width times its height. And so the volume of fluid will be length times width times height. And the weight of that will be multiplied by its density. So um, that's how we figure out that force. Now let's took, uh, take a look at some uh, pictures on the next blackboard that will help us uh, determine how to find the fo force uh, against a submerged plate. Okay, so let's assume that what we're trying to do is figure out what is the force against a submerged plate So we want to know the force against this plate or this wall that is uh, so many units, call it H, the depth of H below the surface at the top, of course, then it's uh, you know, a, a different depth at the bottom, so it varies on the plate between a, a depth of H and a depth of D. Uh, so how are we going to figure out this force against it, against this plate, when the only uh, way we get to figure out force is if the, place, uh, the plate is always at the same depth, then we know the weight of the volume of fluid above it. Whereas here, first of all, we have a plate turning the wrong way. Instead of the plate being like this, where there's fluid above it, the plate is uh, positioned so that the force is coming from the side and there's not fluid above it, there's fluid to the side of it. So what we have to do is a little bit of trick, we, uh, of a trick. We take this slice of the plate and it looks like this. If we turn, if we cut it out and turn it on its side, then instead of facing, uh, instead of having a force coming from the side, it has a force coming from above and we can figure out that force coming from above because there is a volume of fluid above it. So that's what this 
box right here in uh, green represents the weight of the volume of fluid above the slice obtained by a sort of a cheat because we really uh, are trying to find the force against it from the side, but the way we figure out the force against it is by figuring out the force from above. Now, it should be uh, noted that the depth at the top and the depth at the bottom are different, so the force, when we cut this uh, plate or this uh, slice out and turn it, we assume it has the same depth, but it does not. Uh, and the way we make this work is by making those slices narrower and narrower and narrower. So, how do we figure out the force against that slice? Well, let's assume that the width of the slice is L of Y. And uh, let's assume that that uh, slice is at all at the same depth, and that is uh, H of Y. Uh, below the surface, so the uh, weight of the volume of the fluid is its width times its height times its thickness, and its thickness we want to be, you could call it either delta x or delta or d, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, delta y or dy, but since we've done this so many times, we know it's going to go to a dy, right? Or let's, let's just put the step in, right? It's a delta y, and we're going to sum all these up, but the thickness has to get smaller and smaller and smaller, so it has to turn to a dy and an integral. And then all we need to do is put in the minimum height for h of y, uh, the depth of uh, fluid, and the... Uh, uh, actually, this would be the maximum at the bottom and the minimum at the top. So let's take a look at uh, an example problem or two to show how we apply this formula. I forgot to note that uh, this, all of this here is weight, and the way we turn it into force is to multiply it by its density. So that would be the water or oil, depending on what we have. So we're doing example one on page uh, 136. We're going to find the force against uh, this plate. So the force against a rectangular plate, 3 feet high and 4 feet wide, whose top is 6 feet below the surface. Let's get a picture of that. So let's just see that this picture has everything we need. The top is 6 feet below the surface. That's this distance here. Um, the slice is L of Y wide, but L of Y is a constant of just 4 feet. In other words, the, the length uh, does not change as we move from top to bottom. It's 4 feet wide no matter where we are. And the uh, depth of the slice um, is going to be what? Since the bottom of the uh, object is 9 feet below the surface, and if we assume that Y equals 0 here, then the slice is y units um, above the uh, x-axis, and so the height of the column of water above that slice is 9 minus y. So when we set up the problem, we've got uh, the force is the density, the den uh, which is for water, 62.4. The uh, L of Y is 4. The H of Y we just said is 9 minus Y. The thickness is dy. When we're at the bottom, when the slice is at the bottom, the height of the column of water above it is 9 feet. And that would be achieved by a bottom limit of integration of zero. When the slice uh, is at the top, the height of the column of fluid above it is six feet, which would be achieved with a top limit of integration of three.
So continuing, we have 62.4. We're integrate 9 times 4, and that gives us 36y minus 4y, uh, which is it has integral uh, 2y squared. We're doing this between 0 and 3. Can you see in your uh, text that that is uh, 5,619 foot-pounds? Well, what happens when the uh, object submerged has a, a length, a width, that is not the same as we move across. So let's uh, take a look at an example of that type, which is the same as example 2 on page 136. So we're finding the force against a plate uh, that is uh, bounded by the parabola y equals x squared, so it's shaped like a parabola opening uh, upward the, uh, with the vertex of the parabola at the bottom. It's not, the parabola is 9 feet from top to bottom which means that it goes from x equals minus 3 to x equals plus 3, and the top of the parabola is one foot below the surface. So let's uh, put the picture of that in, uh, and then dis uh, discuss the setup. So here's our parabola, uh, y equals uh, x squared. Uh, it goes between 3 and... Uh, minus 3 because that will make it 9 units high and it is uh, 1 unit below the surface so here is the 1 foot of water above the parabola. Um, to find this uh, L of Y which as you can see is what not very wide at the bottom that goes to 0 and then it's 6 feet wide at the top but it is a function of y. The way we do that is to note the x-coordinate on the left and right side of this slice. So if y equals x squared, we can solve that for x and get x equals plus or minus the square root of y. So the x value on the right side would be the square root of y and the x value on the left side where x's are negative would be what? Wouldn't it be minus the square root of y? And wouldn't that give us that L of y is the right x value square root of y minus the left x value minus square root of y so L of y is, is uh, two square roots of y. Now what about the uh, depth? We uh, already have that uh, calculated or, sh or shown on the uh, drawing, but let's uh, point out how we get there. So the parabola is positioned so that this vertex is y equals 0, so the slice is at height y since the parabola is one unit below the surface. From the surface of the water to the bottom of the parabola is 10 feet, and so the depth of water is, as noted here, 10 minus y. And so let's put that together in our force formula. Uh, it is rho 62.4, L of y we said was 2 square roots of y. The uh, depth was 10 minus y. The thickness is dy. And then, what about the uh, limits of integration? So, so when we have a slice on the bottom, the height of the column of water above it is 10 feet. And the way to uh, make this height, all right, this is the height, this is the uh, uh, length, the way to make that height uh, 10 feet is to put a bottom limit of integration of 0. When we have a slice um, on the uh, top of the figure, uh, across uh, here, the height of the uh, fluid above it is only 1 foot, and so the way to make 
way to make uh, that height uh, one foot is to put a y uh, value in of nine. So there's our setup, and if we do uh, the initial computations, we get zero to four. We're integrating twenty times the square root of y, uh, which gives us um, twenty, uh, which is twenty y to the one half. And uh, the integral of that would be what twenty times uh, two thirds uh, y to the three halves, and then uh, this product is two y to the three halves, and when we integrate that, we get uh, uh, two times two fifths y to the Five halves, and we're evaluating between zero and nine. I've done this just a little bit differently in the book. In the book, um, uh, we have factored out this two and uh, grouped it with uh, the 62.4 to make this is uh, 124.8. So the two has come out. So if we do the uh, computations, we see that we get. Um, 10,333.44 foot-pounds. So this one is just a little bit, uh, or maybe as you're getting used to it, a fair amount more difficult to set up because the L of Y has to be computed. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, those problems we did when we were um, finding uh, rotations where we had to find the uh, X values on the left and right and found a horizontal distance as the right X value minus the left X value. So here's the right X value, here's the left X value. We subtract those two and we get this. The H of Y instead of being 9 minus Y is 10 minus Y because the parabola's top is 10 units below the surface. That gives us this setup with this uh, 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 L of Y and this H of Y. We talked about why the limits of integration are 0 to 9 and we did the computation. So here are two uh, good examples. One is uh, maybe a little bit uh, too easy for a test type problem. This example 1 and this one, uh, example 2, is like uh, about like the complexity of a test type problem for this section. So this concludes the uh, last video of uh, the la uh, the video on the last section of chapter 6 uh, fluid pressure